Well, many beautiful things are by accident. The result of this historic experiment is no different. Our beloved scientists, Davison and Germa, just happened to clean an oxidized piece of metal, subsequently bombarding it with a beam of electrons. And the following results will blow your mind. The electron gun here, although quite artistically represented, is a precise instrument which produces electrons at high speed by accelerating them through high potential differences. Oh, and it produces electrons through thermionic emission. And the nickel crystal there does all the magic. Much like the grating in our physics lab, it produces a diffraction pattern. <laughs> yes, I know I gave all of the experiments hypothesis, but there is more to it than meets the eye. Oh, and the collector is able to detect the electron current, obviously. Whoa! Hold on a second, you just said electron, then talked about diffraction which happens only to waves. And then you're talking about current? What? Audiences must acknowledge, recognize, and have understood the work of an extraordinary scientist, Louis de Broglie. All it says is that if a photon can behave as a particle, why not the electron as a wave? In an amazing fight which I hope I had the ability to make during exams, I would be unbeatable, but obviously fairy tale be reserved for the French, all equations applicable to the photon were applicable for the electron. An electron energy would be given as E equal to H nu, and also as E equal to half mv square, that is the kinetic energy. Thus, allowing us to conclude that the electrons accelerated to high speeds have behave as waves. Oh, with high speed comes a greater kinetic energy. And with a greater kinetic energy comes a lesser wavelength. Hence the ability of the electron beam slash wave to diffract from the nickel crystal lattice. Merci. Now not everything is as lovely as the YDSC interference pattern. The diffraction here is not intuitive. It can be well understood using mathematical model of polar graphs. The distance from the point of incident of the electron to the graph depicts the intensity of the electron and the angle with the x-axis or the level axis is the collitude angle. As the collector is shifted, the electron intensity changes, just like how intensity of x-rays would change if they were diffracted. Well, you're not the only smarty pants around here. If electrons were being like a particle, it would have been equally distributed across the collector. So, agreeing electrons accelerated at 54 volt replicate X-rays we have by Bragg's law, n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta, where n is equal to 1 stands for a first order diffraction, d is equal to 0.091 nanometer is the spacing between lattices, theta is equal to 65 degree. So, lambda is equal to 2d sin theta is equal to 2 into 0.091 nanometer into sin 65 degree, which is equal to 0.165 nanometer. Coincidence? I think not. This gives theoretical and experimental verification that electrons have dual nature. Voila.